So many of you will be um, following the recent Oak Dam West discovery by BHP. Um, and not only are these finds just so crucial to energise the exploration sector, but also underlines the continued potential for significant ICG deposits in the Eastern Gawler and in South Australia. One of the um, really interesting aspects of the find is to look at just how close historic drill holes came to finding it um, sometime earlier. So if we look at the section on the right um, from BHP's September release, um, you have 84 there plotted into the barren hematite um, core. These are the historic holes and 87, about uh, 100 metres away from mineralisation. So one of the briefs of the survey is to try to help speed up discovery. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about the work that we've been doing in recent times to aim at doing just that, to speed up discovery. Three important parts of this are improving our ability to, to recognise a significant ore system, improve our ability to predict where they may be, and an important role of the survey is, is getting you the crucial data as quickly and as easily as possible. So firstly, um, the speeding up the access. So the last session of the day will discuss matters related to um, the benefits of having the raw data um, easily accessible and ideally in a machine readable format that's interoperable, which is important now, but it's gonna be incredibly important in the future. Um, but I'll, I'll leave this aspect to them to, to discuss. So essentially um, enabling quick and easy access to crucial data is what the ICG Knowledge Cube is about. Um, providing a portal and landing page that, uh, um, that makes it easier to, to navigate to the relevant data, the reports, publications, etc., cetera, um, is really what we're trying to do. And so, um, as kind of Rowan mentioned, the um, delivery mechanism is still a, a work in, in progress. Um, but rather than um, discuss what it's going to look like, um, I'm going to talk to you about recent work that we've been doing that's um, going into the, um, the thing that I'll be focusing on is the themes of recognition and, and prediction. So one of the characteristics of ICG deposits uh, an association, um, associated gravity and, and commonly mag response. In fact, within the Olympic Copper Gold province, 96.2% of known ICG occurrences can be shown to be within one kilometer of a mag high and um, with a spatially coincident, that has a spatially coincident gravity anomaly. Um, Las Katona has developed a number of iterations of this work, of vectorizing the, the mag and um, gravity highs and low anomalies. Um, and in recent times, he's um, performed this routine on the entire Gawler and incorporated relative magnitude based on residuals, as well as um, looking at the relationship of highs and lows relative to each other. So in other words, he, looking at the cluster analysis. Um, one of the outcomes of this is to show that the Eastern Gawler is dominated by high amplitude gravity anomalies with a cluster of low um, magnitude anomalies. Um, and this cluster type corresponds to many of the known ISCG deposits. Interestingly, this same type of clustering extends um, to the GRV province. Um, and while in the GRV province, you know, a lot of gravity uh, highs may relate to mafix in the lower GRV. It doesn't have to be the case, and it certainly highlights some features that are worth investigating further. So Tom Wise has recently incorporated this work um, into a prospectivity model, um, which also utilises MT, um, basement geology, structure, so additional criteria that can point to those potential field features that are more likely to relate to ICGs. So in addition to um, the typical areas within the Olympic domain, um, it highlights an area to the east of Prominent Hill, um, the Southern York Peninsula, and somewhat similar to the Geoskiro model, um, highlights the Eastern Air Peninsula. Um, this is available as a data layer in SARIG um, and is explained in, a, in his recent uh, Mesa Journal article. So 
So after the, the Oak Dam discovery, one of the best things to happen this year has been the availability of Hyaluron Mineralogy via SARIG. It's a bit of an exaggeration maybe, but I truly think that having drill hole mineral mineralogy at your fingertips is incredibly useful. Now, you no longer need TSG um, to get a quick overview of what's in your, your high-logged hole. So across the page, um, and those histograms represent um, down hole, and each of the colours represents um, a different mineral. So mineralogy is, is key to recognising significant aspects of, of IG, ISCG systems, and as you will hear more in Louise's keynote presentation, um, a lot can be inferred from um, this kind of information. So, for example, just the presence or absence um, of minerals like pyroxene, sericite, you know, feldspar species really can um, tell you a lot about these systems. So, I'd be the first person to admit that um, these summaries are just really an interpretation of the um, spectra, but with this in mind, keeping this in mind, it certainly helps with mapping key alteration minerals and, and selecting holes to look at further. So over the years, one of the, the major objectives have been to provide spectral mineralogy of as many cored holes as possible. So with particular focus really on the Eastern Gawler, and, and um, to date we've got about 11, uh, over 1,100 holes um, across the state. Um, and now uh, with these upgrades to, to SARIG, um, you can look at the mineral summaries for, for um, all of these. So you get to see um, mineral summaries, um, actually view the spectra and um, look at high-res images through Surrey. So just a quick demo. Um, the spectral scanning tab in Surrey um, opens up with mineral summaries shown here, the histograms. Um, and they show um, the shortwave infrared and the thermal if it's available in that hole. Um, and um, if you scroll down below those mineral summaries, you get um, all the tray images. Um, you can click on those tray images and um, get spectra for individual pixels. You can um, click on the tray image and, um, and um, it brings up, and you can either open it in a, another um, uh, another page or um, download it and zoom into it and you get um, you know the higher resolution um, images and this is um, extremely um, useful information. Um, you can also um, click on that um, scalar plot button and play around with that histogram, turn minerals on and off. So this really is useful information and everyone should be using it. So also on the Hylogger front, we have been slowly pulling together case studies um, and endeavour to con continue to, to do this. So um, such as a case study in the um, Punt Hill system that's been written up um, relatively recently. And then of course, there is uh, the ongoing work at um, the OD. So the 3D array of holes around deposits is about 60% complete. And these are a couple of images that Alan Major um, provided me. Um, so in the top, these are uh, mineral abundances. On the top, obviously in the centre of the deposit, you will see um, a, high, um, a lot of iron oxide. Um, right next to that, uh, quite a lot of apatite um, in a very similar distribution. The lower image at the, um, the core of the deposit, uh, muscovitic white mica, and that's surrounded by fengitic white mica to the, on, on the, um, to the right of that. So a bit of a halo. Um, of fingitic white mica around the muscovitic white mica, so controlled by pH. So this is, we look forward to seeing um, more come out of this. So another key um, activity with regards to improving recognition and characterization is work I've been doing with the um, geochemistry. And in previous years, I've, I've talked to you about using the geochemistry to, to map alteration um, over the last year I've worked on some very practical outcomes for, um, that are directly applicable to, um, to explorers. So firstly, I've attempted to fingerprint the minor and trace element characteristics of hematite and magnetite um, group ICGs, and then look to see if there's anything distinctive about the economic deposits. So I've isolated samples from within 
10 kilometres of known hematite and magnetite group ICG occurrences and plotted their minor and trace element values and spider um, plots and, and plotted that against um, bulk continental um, crust. So shown here is the spider plot for the mean minor and trace element um, values for samples in and around mag dominated deposits for the Eastern Gawler in black and um, hematite dominated systems in, in red. Um, and there are um, many common enrichment and depletion trends and this is um, a very useful thing to, to demonstrate and can be used to make some inferences. So for example, if we look at um, uranium on that plot, so uranium on average is, is equally enriched in magnetite dominated deposits than, than hematite dominated systems. So sure in, in, in a hematite dominated systems, in, in, the, in the deposits themselves you get much higher values. Um, but uh, this, the, you get similar typical values. Um, uh, this is what this is demonstrating in, in both um, systems. And it, it basically just shows that there's early uranium enrichment um, and, and that's just a function um, of the system function of their early albertization. So um, more generally, um, these trends can be used as a fingerprint to answer the uh, type of question of have I got the characteristics of an ICG in this drill hole? Um, there are several elements associated with hematite dominated systems that are not enriched in magnetite systems. Um, I've interpreted this to mean that these elements are precipitating at, at lower temperature or more oxidised conditions. And what this means is that these elements will be useful for vectoring from magnetite rich to hematite rich systems. So I've also looked at um, to see whether there's anything distinctive about economic deposits. Now I don't expect you to see any of the detail on these plots, um, but I've broken it down relative to increasing copper, so from lighter to darker tones. And I, I've used published data from ERIG 2012 and, on OD and it, to show that OD actually has very similar geochemical characteristics on these types of plots to um, prominent hill and carapatina. But um, really importantly, these trends are recognisable even in samples with less, less than 300 ppm. And probably the most characteristic feature of the deposits um, is that they have sam um, the deposit samples is a light rare, rare earth enrichment of more than 10 times bulk continental crust, um, even in these relatively unmineralised samples. Uh, also rather interestingly, um, deposit rare earth element um, trends commonly include um, a flat to um, positive europium anomaly. Um, and yeah, I would interpret this as being um, related to very oxidising conditions which um, um, potentially is a key ingredient for forming a large deposit. So using these criteria, I've searched through individual samples in my sample set to see where these occur. And um, while there's not entire holes with drill holes with these characteristic, um, characteristics, there are individual samples in the, um, and, um, from the areas that I've shown on, the, on that map. So I'll go into some of, the, um, some of these kind of details a bit more um, uh, in next week's ICG um, workshop for those that are attending. But um, I encourage explorers to, to assay for these the element suites that I've, I've talked about and um, do these kind of plots. So quickly, um, part of the whole knowledge cube concept is the concerted effort to, to make sure that we get as many representative drill holes from as many of the major deposits as possible. We already have some great examples of the diversity of ICGs we see in SA. Um, but the aim is to um, gather represent, representative core from all the major um, deposits. So this will um, form part of a, an SA ICG core booklet and include the, you know, examples of hematite, magnetite systems, SCARN systems, ICGs, um, and eventually um, examples outside of the Gawler, so you know, for example in the Kernamona. Uh, yeah, and then along the lines of making data available on known deposits, BHP have generously agreed to provide us with an educational set of thin sections on a number of interesting aspects of OD. 
Um, this reference set would be available for viewing at the core library, um, along with our 25,000 odd um, thin sections from across the state. So, and again, towards making valuable resources that we have more widely available, uh, Georgina, who's custodian of the Data Metallogenica collection stored down at the core library, has been um, busy turning the uh, publicly available rock plates into an online discovery trail um, accessible via SARIG. So DM being a large collection of rocks from the major deposits um, around the world and owned by Amara. Uh, Georgina has been compiling spectral data recently on each of these open file samples and this really promises to be a valuable resource in characterising our major deposits. Okay, so quickly in conclusion. Um, so the ISCG Knowledge Cube is really the consolidation of key pieces of work and useful data we have on ISCGs. Um, it really goes towards helping recognition, characterisation and, and mapping these systems. Um, and it's with the overall purpose of trying to um, speed up discovery. The initial focus is on the globally significant um, Olympic Copper Gold province and really trying to make sure that we do our best to make the data and representative drill core available to the exploration and research community. Um, then using knowledge built up from the Gawler, um, we hope to do a similar thing in the Kernamona and, and further down the track, uh, Peak and Denison's. Thank you. Thank you.